it's, uh, you know, halfway through. So, uh, and we don't know exactly how many delegates we're gonna get, but a lot more than is on the scoreboard right now because there's a lot of process going on in all the states where the straw votes were uh, obtained. Uh, we have a lot of energy on people who are very much engaged in becoming delegates. So I think it's a couple of months before we know exactly, uh, you know, how these numbers will play out. There's a chance that this could go to the convention and things could be decided there too. Do you, do you think it'll, it'll turn out that way or what do you see happening at the yeah. GOP convention? I, I think it's a possibility. It would be unusual, of course, because you see they, and, I, and I'm sure those who are in charge or ahead, they don't want that to happen, but that's the way the process could work. And uh, it would be a, a more democratic process, you know, if, uh, if, if this would happen, then the people who voted for the other candidates then have a little more say in the process. Do you feel like you've gotten a fair shake in the national media? And I was thinking even in particular in the early going, say even back to the Iowa caucuses, did, 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 did you think they gave you the credit and the attention that perhaps you may have deserved? It had to get so bad that John Stewart had to come to my defense and, and making fun of it because they would just uh, automatically skip using my name. And then, of course, there was the, uh, the big debate early on before they knew who the head, you know, the front runner was, and they gave me a total of 89 seconds out of the two hours. So that became pretty obvious uh, that uh, the message wasn't to be heard. You're the oldest candidate out there, a senior member of Congress, and yet you resonate with so many young people. In fact, in California, you're touring universities, Chico State, UCLA, Cal Berkeley. Why is it that you resonate so well with this younger group of people? The most common answer I get is, well, you're the only one that's telling the truth. And I said, yeah, but they say the same thing. Well, we don't believe them, <laughs> you know? So there's, there's this attitude that I'm trying to tell them exactly what's wrong and what can be done. Even though I have a dire message about how bad things are, the, the students, young and with open minds, they come away being very optimistic because they at least say, well, you're telling us the truth and you give us the things that we can do and how we can change things. Personal liberty, mind your own business, take care of yourself, make your own decisions. They don't like the wars that are going on. They don't like the idea of inheriting this debt. That's one big thing they don't like. A big issue here in the Bay Area right now is medical marijuana, legalizing marijuana. And I know you're gonna be talking to folks in, in Berkeley and it's a big issue there right now. Um, where do you, what would you say to them? Or are you gonna bring that up? Will you talk about that kind of thing? Where do you stand on that? I say the feds should get lost. They have no business. If they write a law and said, medical marijuana is a reasonable thing to ask for, and the feds shouldn't come in and arrest people who are doing this, obeying the California law. I think people have the right to put into their minds and into their souls and into their bodies whatever they want at their own risk. We just had some new polls come out about California. Uh, perhaps less than 35 percent of Californians are registered Republicans now. It seems that two-thirds of the people are Democrats. How do you change that or is there a way to change that? How does the GOP party reconnect or can it? I think they could if they look at the campaign we're running and the people who support me, because a lot of them used to be Obama supporters. And you can't say that about any other Republican because of this civil liberty issues, this personal liberty and anti-war. And the Republicans, I think, are digging a hole for themselves. They don't want, uh, they, they complain about Obama not fighting enough wars. And they want to be more engaged. And young people don't want the wars to continue nor to pay for them. Uh, so I think the only way you can uh, you know, appeal to a broader base is to change his message a little bit. And uh, I think the old message, even the old message of being fiscal conservatives, they've lost all credibility. Ron Paul, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you.